with a new show called Life is Good. I'm Heather McEwen, your ever-loving hostess, and we're filming here in the beautiful town, city of Newport. And I'm really glad you're watching because what would you be doing if you weren't watching this? Something functional probably, but you might learn something because I'm interviewing local people who inspire me, who have taught me a lot in my short period of living here. I've lived in Vermont for 35 or so, 36 years. I got 27 in algebra, so that's not my forte. I don't know what year I arrived. And I hope to God I don't leave very soon because I couldn't figure it out. Anyway, it's going to be a great show because I have three lovely people who you will probably recognize, but maybe you didn't know as much about them as you're going to know at the end of this show. And um, it's the positive side of life. You hear a lot of negative on the news and you hear a lot of negative in the streets, but this is Newport and the Northeast Kingdom. So I think there's more positive than negative here and we're going to find it and hear about it. So I'll start the music here. I'm terrible at this. Thank God Brian McRae is here on the camera because I don't know what I'm doing with that. Massachusetts, if you've ever run Boston Marathon. I know, yeah, that's right, that's nope. right. But no. other than that, it's a very nice place. It's lovely, it really is. It's an old city. It's eight miles west of Boston, yeah. and it's just a lovely place to be. But it is a city. No, for sure. Mm -hmm. Everything's a city. Yeah. It's not even a bedroom community no. now. It's a, oh, it's yeah. a quick nap, and, it, and it, you're it, back on the tea. Yeah. What brought you here? Well, you know, Henry and I, my late husband, Henry Dowd, we used to go up to Waitsville, Vermont, skiing all the time. Mm -hmm. And he loved it up here. And I didn't ski, but he did, and that's, that's fine by me. So Henry became ill mm -hmm. and couldn't ski anymore. So he said, well, maybe we should give up the timeshare. And I said, no, 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 I love it up there. I said, you know, when I get across Route 89 into Vermont, I feel myself relaxing. I said, let's just go and just, re just explore mm -hmm. and see the beauty up there. Yep. So that's what we did for 30 plus years. And in 2018, I was able to retire. And the only stipulation that Henry had was he wanted to go by water. And I said, okay. And you're so close to the Atlantic. Well, we, yeah, you yeah. You might as well come to Lake Memphis Magog. Well, that's the thing, you know. We, and I said, well, I won't go to the Cape. Cape Cod is out of the question. And Maine is very touristy also. I said, what about Vermont? There's lakes. We're not really involved with lakes down here. So he said, OK, you find us some place to look, and, and we'll go. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And I, I was on Zillow day in, day out, day in, day Most out. Most people are on Zadex day in, day out, day in, day out. <laughs> and I found Newport. And I was like, I remember that town. You know what I remembered about it was the lake, number one, yeah. but that gorgeous St. Mary's Church coming into town. Are you Catholic? Yes. That's a beautiful church. It's a gorgeous church, yes. Three Hail Marys in your back. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Gosh, my child, I love that church, too. Oh, it's beautiful. And so, you can see it from every part. Yeah. Whenever you're on the lake, you just look up and it's look there. Up. Yeah, yeah, I know. And you can't get lost if you can see the steeple. That's really symbolic. You know, yeah. that, that yeah. is a story there. I'm sure. You know, for I'm the sure. lost souls of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I yeah. might be one of those lost souls. I have no sense of direction. That's okay. Neither do I. Jeff Blue gave me a compass because I couldn't find the gate. You know, oh, like, come on. Seriously. But I made it into a wall decoration, and now it's a little compass that oh, opens up like a hobbit door on my wall. It's like, I know where, I, I know my room, where my room is. Yeah, me too. You know? <laughs> no sense of direction. It's true. Oh, totally. We've got a great uh, studio audience here tonight, too. I know. And uh, if the camera turns, it'll hit the couch, so you don't have to do that. They don't want to be on camera. But they're all there, and it's really great. More Vermont people. Hello, yeah, everybody. Sorry, everyone. Hi, thank you. How are we doing so far? So good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Oh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Henry passed. Me. I wanted to talk yeah. about your attitude because sure. when I first met you, mm -hmm. I, re I don't remember how we met, but we bumped into each other in Vista. 
Yes. And you said you had a sore neck, and I said, well, come on over to my house. Right. And that's when you told me that Henry had passed away, and your attitude was so positive. What do you do to keep positive, and what made you stay? Well, you know, I got to thinking, a lot of people said to me, Carol, are you going to come home? And I thought, I don't know. And I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And then I realized, you know what? Home isn't a place. Home is the people. And the people that I've met up here have made this a home. True. People have adopted me into their family. And I I'm just overwhelmed by the kindness. Have they put you in the will? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> I asked Janelle, but she hasn't done it yet. <laughs> You have time. I you have time. time. Um, I think it's amazing too because I've lived in Vermont for, I don't know, my daughter's 42, so I've lived here a long time. She oh, was wow. born in Chicago, mm -hmm. and then she was eight when we moved here. So you do the math because, of course, I can't. But I've been here a long, long time. Yeah. And I was in Franklin County for all of those years. And I started off, I came here with a head injury. <laughs> Best thing that ever happened to me. Seriously, I'm all better. Okay. There you go. See? I yeah, know. right? Yeah, yeah. But I got a job on a dairy farm with my two little ones. Oh. And it was 70 hours a week for 150 a week. Okay. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing anyway. Sure. And the farmer said, do you take drugs? I said, no. He said, do you drink? And I said, no. I thought, God, it's going to be some kind of job if I have to do that to keep this job. He said, good. Then I can teach you how to be a farmer. And he did. And that was getting in the back door of Vermont. So I got in here mm -hmm. as a herdsman on a dairy farm. Wow. And everybody in that place, they get, when I started writing again, after I started getting better, I started a column in the paper called The Hapless Herdsman. Mm -hmm. And they never laughed at me. They knew. Yeah. But they were kind. Yes. And they were yeah. patient with me. And uh, it was the best part of the moving here was coming in the back door as a mm -hmm. humble person who yeah. had to work really, really hard. Absolutely. And Absolutely. they adopted me. Yeah, and it's it and was this, wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling, isn't it? It was great yeah, because really you have a head nice. injury anywhere else in the world, and they they talk baby talk to you. Oh yeah, well you know back home there was an Irish pub. Not that I believe me, not that I ever went. Oh yeah, but, this is not water, folks. This is not what this is Guinness. Oh well, albino Guinness. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and it was called the Harp and the Bard. And you would walk in, and they had this big, huge door, and on the door it said, there are no strangers, only friends you haven't met yet. Oh, I believe that. And that's how I feel up here. You know, there are no strangers. I don't know a stranger. I have a friend that I met that laughs at me because she thinks I adopt all these people in the supermarket. Well, we do. And we do. And I mean, they, you know, they follow you, and, and sometimes they'll say, oh, we, can I call you? And I'll say, oh, sure, you know. And the next thing I know, oh, I didn't get their name, so I put down lady in Kleenex aisle, you know, <laughs> so that when she does call, I know who it is. But it's just been, it's been a great trip. And, and you know, I think, you asked me about attitude, and I think attitude is, is something you have to do for yourself. Okay, tell me how. Well, you know, every day you have to get up and say, I have two choices. You know, I can make it a good day, or I can make it a not so good day. And I don't choose to do anything but make it a good day. And if I'm having a bad day, then I have to talk myself out of it and say, you know what, this isn't what you're all about. You know, this isn't what you tell other people. So you can't be this way yourself. Exactly. So, and that's, that's just how I do it. And I try to keep busy. You know, it's hard to be anything but isolated here unless you do it yourself. Yeah. Everybody has to be self-motivated. I'm yes. a hermit. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know it because we're talking now, mm -hmm. but I can go days without oh, walking yeah. out. I mean, I train here at the house, so I don't have to go to the gym. Exactly. And exactly. After four days this week, I thought, my gosh, I haven't been out. And so my friends, Karina and Brian, we go for a walk. And I'm yeah. like, thanks for getting yeah. me out. Because even though I train in the house, it's yeah. completely non-social. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that can be a habit. Yeah. So you kind of inspire yeah. me on that because you work in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Volunteer. Volunteer at the yeah. hospital. You're in charge there now. Well, I'm the president of the hospital auxiliary. What do you do there? Well, we are in charge of uh, fundraising, sort of. Oh, wait. Um, no, I didn't bring anything with me. No, that's OK. I have two massage <laughs> gifts to Oh, that's right. <laughs> Who got those? Yes, I do. <laughs> you got those? No, no. I'm, not, I'm saving those to raffle off next oh, month. OK. Yes. That's When good. it gets cold outside. Oh, sure. But, um, 
you know, there are a lot of the departments in the hospital that need equipment that isn't in their budget. And so what the auxiliary does is we try to raise money so that we can ask them, well, what's your wish list? What do you need? And we've gotten a couple of really good items. I like a kidney. You know, well, not so much a kidney, but no, okay, no, kidney. close, very close. Dialysis machine? No. Um, we just paid that off. High five. We did. Really? We that Why don't you yeah. run the country? We just paid Get rid it of off. our trivially know, million right? debt. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So yeah, so we are. We had a harvest fair. We, I have to draw a raffle tomorrow. We have a raffle going on, so we have to draw the winners of the raffle tomorrow. But we have lots of lots of things and lots of fun things for people to do if they want to get involved. Very nice. If they so how would they get in? What? How do they contact the hospital to get involved with the auxiliary? They should just call the hospital and ask to speak with Marilyn Barry. Marilyn Barry. If mm -hmm. you haven't heard that before, write it down. Write it do down. Do you all have pens and pencils? Marilyn Barry at the hospital here in Newport mm -hmm. will get you hooked up with this young lady and mm -hmm. she will get you an, we'll a get in touch with you. voluntary yep. job to do. Mm -hmm. I had, I've had a really good experiences at the hospital. I, got, I was bitten by a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I talk about that, Janelle? Sure. Anyway, 24 hours, well, I was with my neighbor, uh -huh. a little neighbor down the street, <laughs> they're great dogs, they're fabulous people. And she said, my hips are sore, but I'd like to go on the new path. I said, well, I'll take you on the new path on the Scott Farm. Uh, what are they called? Bluffside Farm. Oh, yeah. Path. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we'll go together. She said, okay, let's take some dogs. They have seven dogs. They they're, they keep their children's dogs. You know how it is. Dogs. They did. Um, anyway, um, she says, we'll take the dogs. I went, you know, oh, no. So she, she takes this gorgeous pit bull, and she gives me, here's an 11-year-old rescue. It didn't even come out from behind the toilet before for a week when we got him because he was so afraid of everybody. <laughs> I've had him for 11 years. He's so kind. He's a little nervous, though. So we start walking. We get to the road, and a big truck goes by, and the dog suddenly, suddenly the dog is on my leg, and he's Ooh. pulled a quadricep off the bone. Oh That's what my. it felt like. I'm in pain, so I go down, and I'm holding on to her arm. And she says, he's autistic. <laughs> and I said, oh, you know... I was married to an autistic man, he never bit me in the leg. <laughs> but anyway, so 24 hours later, and here's one of our studio audience who saved my life. This is Newport, I've got to tell you. Her name's Janelle LeBlanc. And uh, I said a prayer. I was out there, and suddenly my body seized up. I couldn't move in my front yard 24 hours later. I was like, so somebody goes by, two young ladies go by, one of them was Janelle, and she said, we like your door. I said, come on, I have a magic path. You walk along the path and make a wish. But I had just said to myself, oh, please, somebody has to help me. Yeah. So I, she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, I was bitten by a dog yesterday, and I can't move. And she said, well, I'm a wound specialist. Would you like me to take a look at it? And I was in the hospital an hour later, and I was completely, I couldn't move, and I was being infused with all I had enough penicillin in me to date the entire British fleet if it docked here. Oh, but I got better. They were wonderful. See? Yeah. The nurses were so kind. The nurses are kind. And Janelle they saved my life. Are. And Janelle, Janelle is a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. She's been there for me more times than I care to tell you. Yeah. But You're in good health, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Yes. I'm in very good health. And you know why? Why? Your attitude. Yeah. I think so. I think so. I really do. You know, I don't have time to be sick. You know, I don't want to be sick. I have too much to do. Too many people to meet. Too many things to do. You know, aren't we lucky to have this young lady here? I am so lucky to have you as a friend. Oh, same here. I really am. Because uh, there have been times mm -hmm. when I have been really low. Yeah. And I thought, well, Carol, what would Carol do? You know, you wear those little braces. What would this one do? What would that one do? What would Bob Villa do if your house fell in? That's right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I know. Yeah. Call sticks and stuff. Call, you know, pick and shovel. Well, right. I say, what would Carol do in this situation? And uh, I kick myself in the pants. Which is very difficult because I'm such a spaz. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. I know. I know that feeling. Yeah. If you had, if you had ten things in your life that have brought you down, how have you got not mostly though? Well, there have been a lot of things that brought me down. You know, um, I lost my baby sister back in 2008, mm -hmm. and she was precious. She was a wonderful nurse, and she was kind of. I looked out for her. She was uh, nine years younger than I was.
Texas. Mm. And I just looked out for her and she was so much fun to be around. She had polio, but she died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, cool. And that really brought me down. But you know what kept me going was no. the fact that she's not in pain anymore. And she doesn't have that big brace anymore. She's up in with the angels and she's walking around. She may even be dancing by now. But she couldn't walk without the brace and now she doesn't have it. What so kind of nurse was she? She was a OR nurse and then she was critical care. And uh, she was excellent. She was such a good little nurse. And she wouldn't retire. She wanted to keep working as long as she could. Good. And she got herself sick. And you know, she kept thinking, Oh, it's gallbladder, it's gallbladder. But you know, we took her into Dana Farber and they found that it wasn't gallbladder. And I um, love Dana Farber. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I worked at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. At I the loved time. him too. Yeah. And I was there for um, 30 years between the Brigham and Women's and Newton Wells thing. Were you at Brigham and uh, Women's when Dallas had his face transplant? Yes. I met him and I wrote a story about yes. him and I met his feet. Yes. Great yes. story. This man, <laughs> God, this man was, his name is Dallas and he's from Dallas, yeah. which is so weird. Yeah. I mean, we don't see any kids named Newport, do we? No, we do. Like, no. where, where, where are you from? I don't know, but I'm going there. Maybe Boston. Maybe. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I do know Boston. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Dallas is sitting, is, is painting a church, and his ladder is metal. Yeah. And it hit the wire, mm. and he was blown off the ladder. He fell like 25 oh, feet. Yeah blown off the ladder, so I didn't feel the landing, because he'd lost most of his skin. Mm -hmm. It went in through, I guess, his arm, and it came out through his leg, yes. and it blew off his face. And so he was the first face transplant, face transplant in this country? Yes. And so I'm in the Boston airport, and I'm waiting for my flight to wherever I was going. I never know. I'm not the navigator. I just get on. I'm taking it, but he's flying. Thank God. And uh, so I see this man with a beret, a French beret on his and he's leaning into a woman who's in a wheelchair. And they're just head to head and they're really chuckling and laughing and I can just see their bodies moving and laughing together. They're first boarded and he sits in the first seat. It's an E-190, a 100 passenger plane, two and two. So they're sitting together and they're, they've just been given a wedding shower but that. but you went. Oh, I loved it. I didn't it. get to go, but oh, I do remember. Oh, at the burn yeah. unit because they met in the burn unit there. Yeah. Oh. And he was the first face transplant. And this young lady, um, she had been texting in her car, and she was 23 minutes in an inferno. Yeah. And she said, "I had a five-year-old child who I've never held a game. I can't raise my child, but I can still love." Yeah. And. This woman had been completely, I mean, there, there was not, nothing, nothing on her. There was oh, just, yeah. just, you know, yeah. the skeletal system. And that was it. And they were so in love. And they were talking to me about Brigham and Young and the kindness they always had in yeah. Boston hospitals. And I've had, I've had kindness there, too. Yeah. It's a wonderful place. It is. I worked in vascular surgery. I worked in neurosurgery. And I worked in primary care. And I also ran the residency program. For nurses or doctors? Oh, doctors. All oh, right. Yep. Crack the whip. You bet. Yeah. What's the biggest problem you have with residents? The biggest problem with residents, I will tell you, is there's a thing where they have to log duty hours. Oh, so they lie for each other? No, they just don't do it. And mm. they could get dinged if they don't. And just to follow them around, you have to be their mom. You have to be their mom. You know, and that's that kind of started me in the residency program to keep candy in my office because I knew that they wouldn't come and talk to me if they had a bad day unless there was a motivation. So a bowl of candy, they'd say, hmm, okay. So they'd come in, grab a candy. i said, how's your day going? Let me tell you. And then they'd sit down and then, you know, you can iron out their problems. So that's, you get to learn a lot about uh, people over candy I bet they bowl. keep in touch. They do all over the country. When my Henry passed away, I was flabbergasted. I was getting phone calls and, and emails and, and flowers from all over the world because they're not, they didn't just stay in Massachusetts. And it's amazing. I just hung up with one before I came. Well, the next and time they come to town, bring them over. We'll oh, have a good interview. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll have a roast. We'll have a yes. Carol Dow roast. Well, you know, one of them actually emailed me a couple of weeks ago and he said, 
You have sold me on Vermont. He moved his family to South Burlington. And oh. He's working at UVM now. Okay. I said, well, you can come a little further up. We need a radiologist. But sure. Yeah, so, but I, it, it was just so heartwarming and, and so wonderful to be there, you know, through all the crises and, and so forth. We had a doctor get killed at the Brigham at one time. Oh, the shot? And, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And, um, you know, so all, and then it just showed how a huge hospital like that can, can come together. Yeah. And yeah. then, speaking of coming together, will you come back and be on my show again? If you have me. And if they have the show. If they have a show. They won't cancel it because of you. <laughs> they may just cancel it because of me. No way. Well, this has been great, Heather. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. to this song and I remembered it but it's really good yeah when the music starts yeah when it gets going it's it's Cal it's Calypso on this Is one it? on this oh, one wow. okay. which I like Kayla Farrar if you don't know her I hope you get to know her tonight and then keep in touch because this young lady is amazing we're going to talk about her early life right her middle life you're not even in middle life yet. Yes, I am. No, no, no. no, no. I'm 70 and I'm in middle life. So you're not <laughs> okay. even near okay, me. You're okay, you're right. You're right. So, and then we'll talk about how I met you and, and Jeffrey. And then you got married here at Dunrobin. Yes, that we did. was fun. fun. And how you started your own business after getting a master's degree on your own. So, where do you want to start? You want to start See, that's your job, not mine. <laughs> My job. Okay. <laughs> now, when you were a little girl, your mom became a truck driver. Yes. And who raised you? Uh, we were lucky enough to have different family members that uh, stepped in and took us in while my mom was trucking. Uh, <laughs> it was an easier way to make a living, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, She's a dynamite woman. I mean, to become is. a trucker. She has a long line of, of very strong women in my family. Let's talk about them. Uh, well, my grandmother, Irene, is a matriarch. She uh, raised six kids. Uh, my grandfather was with her for uh, 49 years they had. And uh, she worked the whole time. She's still working. She's still uh, she's 85 this year. Uh, this year, 2022, not next year. Okay. Um, so she's 85. She still mows the lawn with a riding lawnmower. You should see her come down the hill. She gets up that hill and she sticks it in neutral when she's coming out. She goes. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> she's a derby, right? She's a derby. Thank God, we're safe here in Newport. <laughs> <laughs> if you see someone passing you on the way to the quick stop, that's your grandma. That's my grandma, grandma Irene. <laughs> that's her. Yeah, well, she was quite amazing and uh, kept you in line. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah but also sure. gave you enough time to run. Yes. So how did you keep busy when you were young? Uh, well, I liked to rollerblade a lot, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. I was out rollerblading all over Derby Line. There are no streets there, really. No, there's not. You know. so, so what did you do? You have winter tires on them or something? <laughs> well, the um, rubber tires, see, they work a lot better than the, the plastic ones. They're a little less, you know, uh -huh. you know on the pavement. And uh, they are a little slicker though, so if you hit the you know the yellow or right line on the street, if you hit just right, you could fall. So I'll keep that in mind for the next time I don't do that. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I, I'm the only Canadian that can't skate. I mean, on real skates. So don't give me those. No, no. they're a little easier. You know, you can't hurt yourself in the face or anything. They're not Watch sharp. Me. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't hurt myself with my skates. I ran into a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that with my car any day. Yeah, any day. Any day. But um, there are more inspiring things than your youth, what, full of fun and physical activity. Yes. Um, when did you decide to go back and do all the education? Well, I was 19 when I finally went to school. It was, uh, was I 19? Yeah. Maybe. I was 19 once. Yeah, me too. No, I, I think actually, I think I might have been 21. I think I was 21. 
that time. Like, you know, it was just all meshes together in there, and it's like a big old melting pot. Um, I was 21 working at the call center in Newport back when it was CRMI. You know, it's, it was RDI. Who knows what it is now? Um, and, I hope uh, it's something we can still spell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RDI. I've heard of that. I think they closed down during COVID, right? And they gave everybody work at home or something like that? Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what they're doing now. I, I don't pay attention. I would hate that job. They pay the bills. I would like to pay bills. Yes. There you go. So continue. To. Yes. Sorry. Um, no, 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 you're fine. And uh, I went back to visit the, the school nurse, as I did a few times there. She was wonderful. She was uh, my rock in, in high school. High What's school was name? hard. Uh, Betty Briers. Uh, she's no longer in uh, this area. She has uh, moved to California for the time being, as, as far as I know. Uh, but she she was wonderful. Um, and Carol Bailey was one of the nurses. She was awesome as well. And uh, Colleen Damore Ortiz. I was uh, one of the nurses aiding there for a while. So I spent a lot of time getting to know those women and helping them out. And Betty said to me, you know, the hardest part is getting in there and putting your name in and doing the paperwork. To get into school, you mean? Yeah, like just put your foot like in the, the door. Like and, yeah, and, and yeah. the Pell Grant, if it's just like starting this. it. Starting it was the hardest part. And it was because it's so nerve wracking until you get in there and you know, it's got these people that have helped you. And um, I had, uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember their names. Mercedes was my first uh, advisor, and then I had Cindy, and they were both wonderful. They helped me with everything, understanding the processes and what I'm going to need to do. And uh, from there, I got my ma uh, associate's degree here at CCV. Um, and I went forward to get my bachelor's degree at uh, Johnson State University, which at the point of graduation, it was Northern Vermont University. There were um, the t-shirts, I mean. Exactly. There were the exactly. hats and the, and the sweatshirts that you have, that you bought your parents and grandparents from college. <laughs> well, you What's know, it called? Northern Vermont University now. N it was, and they're changing it again because there's another merger going on. Because so. they couldn't fit it all on the shirt? <laughs> Northern Vermont. Well, they, want, they want more now. Uh, and oh. I think it's uh, University of Vermont, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so that's uh, Johnson and Linden were yep. Northern Vermont University. And for the Vermont University, it's uh, Castleton, Linden, Johnson, I think there's another one. Uh, BTC possibly, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not so either. don't quote me on that. I won't. Yep. Don't quote don't this quote. young lady. That's right. Um, so. And from them I went to get my master's because I wanted it and why not, right? So, uh, yeah. It's blinking hard. It, you know what? It, it was hard, but I knew what to expect. You know, and that's that's the hard part. You don't know what to expect in this world. You know, and and school was the one. You know, you, you can always learn something new, right? And when you can actually put it towards something that's going to be part of your future, it's going to build your future and build you to where you want to be. You know, it's it's worth it. Mm -hmm. When I met you, I met you on the Northern Star when I was a deckhand. That's right. Washing dishes. I had three sinks and a porthole. I was a happy girl. It's all a girl needs. And. Um, <laughs> It's true, I, I really enjoyed that, you know. But I got to meet the people too, which was lovely. And I met you and Jeffrey. And it was, a, what is it, a murder mystery night? No, a it was just, a, just a regular just day. Just a regular night? Yeah, just a regular day. I wonder who I wanted to murder that night. It wasn't me. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, everybody lived, so I guess it was nobody. Nobody. Um, and we talked, and we had an intense conversation about women's rights, and um, the Me Too movement, only not, we didn't mention Me Too, but we right. mentioned violation of women. And we just had this very intense conversation and I found out that you were helping women like that. And I thought, that's a special person right there. So I'm glad we stayed in touch. Definitely. Now, you yeah. took that and then you went to another level. What are you doing now? Well, um, besides the dog business, we'll get into that after. I, I work at a tree farm. I know. Yes, it's wonderful. Um, we do transplants, uh, we do, uh, they're called tutus. So they've been in the seed in the ground for fall and spring and fall and spring, and that's in the nurse the little seed beds. And then we move them over to a, a nursery bed, and they're in there for another fall, spring, fall, spring. And then we uh, you get to know them personally. Yeah, each one has a name. Don't ask me to remember them all because okay. I cannot. When I was farming, <laughs> every cow had a name. There you, go. there you go. The cows are a lot easier to tell though. They have a personality that will look different. These are trees that look the same. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Even the different varieties kind of look the same. Oh, yeah. how tragic. I know, right? So much for the gene pool in a tree. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry, back to you. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so we dig up trees and uh, sell them wholesale at 100 roll per roll. And um, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's physical. And um, I'm learning something new every day. And you do the books. I help with the emails, yeah. And uh, 
Sorry, I had to draw a blank for a minute there. Right now, I'm selling Christmas trees on the weekend. So I'm up there uh, with a little Santa door. hat on. Wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm carrying all these trees on my back. Carrying the, uh, you want a Christmas tree? You know? <laughs> I have a menorah up there. I not too many people come. Guys, not too many people come. Hey, Heather, you want you want a Christmas tree with your menorah? Okay. <laughs> sure, they mix. Yeah, for three or four, you know. Put, put them next to Buddha. Have That's a good right. day. We all celebrate <laughs> together. And you know why I have all these things here? Because every single religion has something good. And... I taught Holocaust studies, and my friend from Thailand gave me that. And and when I have Airbnb people here, you'd be amazed. I've had absolutely every race, color, creed, orientation. I love it. And they walk in and they immediately know because everybody basically they they go back to their culture when they come to a weird house like this. Right. They like to see something that they can relate to. Exactly. Because they don't relate to an old blonde woman. I don't know well, who that. knows what color it's going to be next week? <laughs> um, but whatever. Um, it's so I, I love that, and I love that it brings up conversation. Right. So yeah, I'll take a Christmas tree any old day. Yeah. I, you know, I used to keep them up until Mother's Day. Well, why not? You know. Well, because I had such a cold house. There you go. Yeah. And I couldn't heat that house. I had lived in it for over thirty years, and if I couldn't see my breath when I woke up in the morning, I thought I died overnight. And my tree would live, and it would bud. And then it would just die, and I'd wake up one morning, and all the all the needles would be yeah, down. Yeah. But I love Christmas. It is a wonderful time of year. How many are you selling up there? Well, we don't have as many as other years. We there is a Christmas tree shortage. Um, a lot of people in the last years of COVID, who were out of the area uh, for Christmas and such, didn't have the availability, so they wanted to get a tree. So uh, I kind of cut into the next couple years, because in order to sell a tr uh, trees each year, you have to have, you know. Every year you plant these trees, and it takes ten years to move the, to sell a tree as a Christmas tree. So you've got to have a tree that's nine year old, eight year old, seven year old, all the way through in order to keep backing yourself up for that stock. Um, so we, we're a little bit short on big trees. We've still got some small trees. I'm sure we've got a bunch of big trees left up there. We've only been selling for one weekend. Um, this will be our second weekend. Where is it? Uh, a Second Sun Tree Farm. It's a ten thirteen LeBlanc Road uh, in Barton, Vermont. Any relation to you, Janelle? No, I'm from Louisiana. Yeah. Well, the last name. Yeah, no, that's fine. It just so happened. <laughs> Do you say last name's Green here, but yeah, okay, well, it's, not. <laughs> it's a good French name. It is a good French name. Louisiana, it's a very good <laughs> French name. But um, yeah, that's one thing. But now let's talk about what I really want to talk to you about, and that would be dog the dog business. Yes. You are a dog whisperer. I try to be. Some of them don't listen very well, and some of them don't speak my language. Okay, I wrote a story about you when you started that. It's called Pause. Half Pause Will Travel. Half Pause Will Travel. Like, if you think of Paladin in my day, wow. Half Gun Will Travel. Yeah, yeah. This is Half Pause Will Travel. I love it. I do too. Love and it. what do you do? How do you do it? Uh, well, uh, I've got my little Jeep out there. Uh, someday I'm going to have a van. Someday. Um, and I go to people's houses whenever they need me. I do doggy visits, I do grooming, I do bathing. Um, ears, nails. My guy's got a snotty nose, so I'm wiping a lot of that right now. Um, I wasn't going to say anything about your sleeve, but you know. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Made me look. <laughs> Just, kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Um, and the reason I say dog whisperer is because I love animals, but I don't have any and I won't have any because um, Airbnb and my clinic's in here and everything like that. And I hate vacuuming. Let's face it, I haven't seen my vacuum in two years. Lucky. I open the door and go, it's good. No <laughs> dogs, go. no cats. But Dozer, your rescue dog, cancer story. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Um, so in uh, July of 21, we, uh, we were out at the at Willoughby. Beautiful spot. Beautiful. Um, throwing rocks for the dogs, you know, for the dog. And he's out there swimming, and he's climbing all over these rocks, and he's rubbing his belly on him, whatever. He's fine, though. We run up the mountain, and he runs down the mountain. We get in the car, go home. He gets out and he's walking really slow and he's like kind of looks like he's in pain um he didn't want to drink any water he didn't want to pee he wouldn't pee for a good three hours and i'm like all right this is stupid we're going to the vet so at eight o'clock at night i pack him in the car and go down to uh burlington emergency veterinary hospital uh services not hospital um and they do a scan and find out he's got some liquid inside his uh, abdomen there um, they took a sample and found that it was blood. So they um, did a, an x-ray and, and found that he had a mass on his spleen. 
um, which had ruptured. Oh, yes. So usually if, if it's a mass that's not cancerous, it won't rupture um, because it's more solid, it's more of a mass instead of, you know, this unknown, you know, blob of, of who knows what that's unstable. Um, so I was very, very lucky in the fact that his, his um, rupture had started to clot. Um, so they were able to take his spleen out and the tumor along with it. And uh, he's been, it was a, a good three days ago, I got the notification on Facebook that one year ago we had ended the, the major chemo, which is he had five rounds of uh, every three weeks of heavy duty chemotherapy. Um, so we've been a year off of that, which means he's been about a year on the maintenance chemo. Um, the general uh, lifespan after cancer is seven to 10 months. We've already beat that. And oh he's, yeah, he's still he's so healthy. He is, yes, and he's still doing amazing. Um, he was on two medications, the, the um, maintenance chemotherapy pill and a, uh, a medication to help his, his urinary functions main, be maintained because chemotherapy can be hard on, on all those processes. And uh, we found out that his liver was failing. Um, so we stopped that secondary medication and he's on a, a low to no protein diet and his, his kidney function is coming back slowly. Um, he was anemic, it's, it's, his anemia is slowly going away um, and he's doing amazing. He really well, is. you should see this dog. I saw the dog during treatment and uh, then when you got married, when he was still on chemo. Yes. And uh, even then he was friskier than I was at the yeah. wedding. Yeah, he is, he's amazing, he really is. He really mind over matter with the guy. I know matter. It's a Carol Dowd. That's theme. right. Well, will you please come back and be on the show again? Anytime you want. Okay. Of course. Maybe we'll do a remote and watch you do your thing when you're sudsing there you your puppies. There you go. We're going to do a puppy sudsing today <laughs> in your car. Well, unfortunately, I can't do the baths in the car yet. So I either use the, uh, um, there's a local dog wash where you can bring your own, you know, self-serve dog wash, if like you will. spin cycle? Yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you see all that? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> It's <laughs> oh my. That's um, why I don't work at a veterinarian clinic. I've been having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. Anyway, give me a hug. Well, I'll tell you off here. Thank you, my love. Oh, See you again. No. Give my love to Jeffrey. I will, I will. I'm okay. gonna take this with me so the next time. Please, who says you can't take it with you, eh? That's right. Take anyway, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's Kayla Ferrar. Kayla Ferrar and it's um, once again an amazing local young lady who has done wonders with her life, um, made the best of everything, and very proud of the ladies and her, the strong women in her family who have set examples for her. So if you're a mom out there right now, your daughter's watching you. Yes, so uh, be strong. Be strong for the children. Anyway, now we're going to get one more person on. Everybody knows who it is because he's the president of NEK TV. His name is Brian McRae, and I'm going to find a special song for Brian McRae, and, <laughs> and we'll do that. But wait, wait, first a word from our sponsor. Wait, which one? Uh, just a little recommendation from me. Grease. Thank you. If you put it on your face and you fall down, <laughs> you can slide right into your kitchen. And at the same time, think of what you say on moisturizer. I swear it's wonderful. Can I find a date? I don't know. Uh -oh. I've been for you, lad! <laughs> That's great, Heather. I feel like I'm marching into battle. So, Heather. Yeah? Well, here we are. President, oh, I am not worthy. <sighs> President yeah, well, of NEKTV. So yeah. he was here to vet me. Right? Yeah. Did I yeah. pass? Yeah, you're good. You're great. This is this is gonna be like the best show that, that we have, you know. Well the sure. only the only show yeah. that you have right now, yeah. <clears throat> well the only show that I'm in, so <laughs> that's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and Brian's gonna be a regular because I don't know how to handle a camera and he's got a good personality. He's an actor, you know. Yeah, yeah. So sing me something in Scottish before we show your art. Well, I, I don't know. Um well that's really put me on the spot. Um to, uh, I, I don't know, um, there were like a lot of like little, when I was over in Scotland, I, I realized that um, my ancestors came to this country and they didn't speak English, some of them. I can't believe so, they brought you. 
Well, yeah. You know, so, so anyhow, um, when, when, I was, when I was in Scotland, I was, um, one of the things I did is I traveled up in the Highlands and I was fascinated by the, the language. And, and I went um, in the fall of 1984 when I was, uh, I was studying at Edinburgh U University for a year. I took a year from um, University of Vermont, which is really weird. I, um, I was staying in a dorm and uh, I was just walking through the Living and Learning Center there. That's like the storm that has um, different areas for like, you know, pottery studios. And there was a graphic design studio, which is why I was there. And um, the, the lady that ran the overseas programs was somebody that I knew from high school here. So, I, you know, I, one of those days I stopped in and, and I said, you have anything in Scotland? Because I always wanted to go there. Um, after I, I have I, a castle with a little bit of land, sir. Would you be interested in buying that? Yeah, I, you know, I I have a castle. I found out. So I, um, yeah, you too. I, well, there's a, there's a McRae yeah, castle. Yeah, you that being a kilt? Yes, it did. Uh, well, there's not a castle there. I will tell you, it's not what it used to be. <laughs> so um, anyway, I, I went to um, I, I went to Scotland for a year. And, uh, and, and studied abroad my junior year at Edinburgh University, which was probably the best year of my life. I, you know, has it been downhill ever since? No, I, I mean, but in, just in terms of every day being being something different and something new. And, and I I lived in Europe when I when I left North Country. I, I was stationed over in Germany. You're going to be singing me a Scottish ditty. That's right. I was we only have a one-hour oh, show. All right, left. there we go. All right. Um, <laughs> so like, here's a little quick. Um, Push the bile, it's uh, mouth music. Push the bile? Push the bile, oh. uh, mouth music. <laughs> so, Evi atta uva ichida, Evi atta atta ichidua, Camarari aswanin cheese, alsara harara, Camarari aswanin, carada nuller, Camarari aswanin cheese, alsara harara, Camarari aswanin, carada nuller. So, um, basically, um, that is that is that I sang for my, for my little uh, girl when she was little because it, it's Fiona. A, it's, yeah, we She's Fiona, Fiona. Um, because um, it, it's it's about a father worrying about like her, her daughter getting you know her fair share of the dance floor. So um, so anyway. Now it's her, her fair yeah. share of crack. Well now. You know, uh, Fiona. Has to have there's not the same thing oh. as little. You know, the dances we used to have at school, they were so innocent and so yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I know. And all of our parents had the same rules. We yeah. talk about this, you're a teacher. Yeah. Um, our parents had the same rules, so if I got in trouble at school, I really got in serious trouble at home. And yeah. uh, because of that, when we had a dance at school, your, your brother walked you home. Yeah. You know, my brother would walk me home, and if, if Lloyd or Alan Roach wanted to walk me home, they could, but my brother was there. And that was the way. And it was an innocent, sweet time. And, and yeah, yeah. So well, I would have walked home with my brother because he would have been the one that had the drugs or something. <laughs> so, stay away from him. But I walked home with my yeah. brother because his friends were cuter. Oh, well. <laughs> we had just an innocent time. I forgot about yeah, yeah. that subject. Yeah. Oh yes, because well, you were singing to your little yeah. girl about yeah, time was, on the dance was, floor. Was, yeah, yeah. So anyway, but the yeah. dance floors of our, my, our youth were just fabulous. Yeah. And there's, we had a cottage on Lake Mifford Magog in Cedarville uh, when I was growing up. All my friends are still there. So they all had the same thing, multiple generation, but my mom died. So yeah. um, when dad remarried, it was not the same place for my poor sweet stepmother. You know, it's not. Mm -hmm. no. So off they went to another place. But we used to go dancing at the rock cliff and my father would come with us. And he and my stepmother would get up and dance and do the jitterbug and everything. And everybody else would stop dancing to watch them. But I was so proud of him. Now, if you take your parent to a dance, everybody's like, "What's wrong with you?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although you know, they they still still do have like father daughter dances and things like that. For you know, you never it's, know. It's okay. That's okay. Anyway, yeah. back to you, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're here to talk so, about. Oh, wait right. a minute. A word yeah. from another sponsor here. Please tell us about this. Yeah. Okay. So this is an exciting thing that's happened in my life. A couple of years, uh, you know, right right when COVID started. Um, I was in a phase in my life where I was doing a lot of theater stuff, and um, I was in a show, and then, you know, before we knew it, we couldn't meet to do rehearsals, and we were trying to do it on Zoom, and it just wasn't working. 
It's hard to choreograph. Yeah, yeah, really. I can't see your feet. Yeah, the, 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 ti <laughs> the timing is just like so so off. You, you don't realize how awkward it is. You, you know, it's all this, you know, muscle memory. You, you, you move around and you have to be in a certain spot really on the stage. Block it. Yeah, yeah. We're blocking tonight. Yeah, yeah. We're, there, there's, there's like no blocking on Zoom. So, so anyway, um, right around that time, uh, a, a good friend of mine goes, uh, his, he's a veterinarian, and uh, they're both reaching retirement age. And one of the things that his wife wants to do more of is, um, was, was riding. And she had this beautiful um, halflinger horse, and it, it died. And um, so... Oh, hard to he, get the saddle on that. Yeah. So he decided to, they decided to go and, and, and buy another horse. So somehow, I don't know how, they heard about this horse in the Czech Republic. And this is the horse, Hani. And Hani was, I think they, they paid $12,000 for the horse. And somehow I think like, you know, doing this book was some part of the deal. I don't, I don't know. Um, but we never really talked about that. But he came back from Czech, the Czech Republic with his horse. And uh, he said, Brian, I got this great idea. Uh, I've always wanted to write a book, and I want you to illustrate it. And you're a great artist. And, and I've, I've got a little art on the, under my belt. I can't even so, begin to tell yeah. you. I can't even show you all this art, so, folks. We'll have so, to have Brian back on again. Yeah, yeah. Because there's just piles of, of stuff. But I teach art now. My dad was an art teacher. My grandfather was an artist. Um, so it kind of runs in the family. So... Um, over the last two years, I just finished up earlier this summer, and then I, I made some of the last illustrations just, you know, just weeks ago. I mean, it was... Twelve-hour days. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put in, you know, well, twelve-hour, twelve hours of drawing. I, I didn't necessarily do it all in one day, but, I mean, Slider. a lot, yeah, a lot, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, because, hey, I got a real job, you know, I have to teach. So, I, I um, yeah, in and around, like, teaching and, you know, whenever I had breaks and, you know, summer breaks or Christmas breaks, I was, I, that's what I've been doing. I've been drawing for the last few years. And, but um, the book is an incredible success. It, it, it is. Uh, it, we'll just talk a little bit. Yeah, um, that's the one you're looking you know, for. Yeah, like, so, so anyway, like, this, this is like a cover illustration, and this is the way we have to do the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> There's Brian extending himself into yeah, the camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way they used to do it in the old-fashioned days. That's the way Charlie Chaplin used to do it. <clears throat> He'd walk up to the camera? No. No. Well, actually, um, you know, a little bit before that, you know, Georges Méliès would have probably done it that oh, way. Of course, so, Georges Méliès. Georges Méliès. Everybody knows him? Um, yeah. I um, do not. The tr he, he, he made the first science fiction movie, A Trip to the Moon. And uh, I want to go there. Yeah, yeah. So, anyhow. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing. And this book has, I don't know, I, I think I counted like 50-odd illustrations. It's, it's hard to tell exactly how many because like each one of these individual leaves and, and potato flowers is its own illustration. Nice and, see? Yeah. And what I did was I scanned them in. Don't you wish you had one of these? Yeah. I need it. It's like, so oh, it's a big see. contact lens. Oh, my God. It's so hard yeah. to get a pair. So like I, oh, I, so I draw the, you know, the individual things separately so that I could sort of assemble the potato plants out of their constituent parts. Are they so real I, potato plants? Yeah. They're different types of potato flour. From potato potatoes? Yeah. Well, like... You grew up on a vegetable. I, I, actually, a actually the, um, the purple ones are sweet potatoes, I guess. And mm -hmm. they're different types of potatoes. Like, you know, this you know the, the regular potatoes are just like that white flour. And I've got a few of those in there. But this horse started out on, on a potato farm, and the remarkable thing about this story is the horse was just working as a draft horse on the potato farm, and this little girl was born um, deaf, and she had a hearing disability, and so, you know, she goes through this whole process of getting an operation so she can hear, and then this horse is kind of rescued from this farm down the road by her father. The father had been an Olympic... Um, a trainer for the, the Czech team in, back in the 70s for the Olympics. And so um, he saw this horse, draft horse, on this farm and, and he said, said, I can get that horse to do the hurdles. Yeah, no, that, that horse has talent. And somehow... Get him to do the 50-yard dash. Exactly. He, he, he recognized that talent. He, he saw that in the horse, 
and said, I'm going to, I'm going to buy this horse for my, my daughter, Laura. And, you know, she taught the horse everything he knew. Um, and they, they won. They did yeah, the national championship. They won the um, European championship in 2019. Can you believe that? And so um, of all, uh, uh, you know, the Czech Republic just had them. They were they, they were the only it's team. Like the Belarus of horseback right? Yeah, and all the other you know all these other countries like Austria where the you know the, the breed eliminate uh, was uh, uh, originated was Spanish riding school. Was big Vienna. yeah, big massive um, you know team and lots of money and you know here comes this deaf girl in with you know a horse that came from a potato farm and, and wins the the championship. So it, it is quite a story. And it's quite a book. And how can we get it? Well, it's available on Amazon now. The Potato Horse Who Became a Star. Right. So if you Google or you go to um, Amazon and do a search uh, for the Potato Horse who became, a, who became a Star, if you do the Potato Horse That Became a Star, a different book comes up, but it's Who Became a Star. Who Became a who Star. Became a star. And then right. um, you, can, you can find the book that I illustrated. So. I, I've, I've been published in magazines and stuff before because I was a graphic artist. Show us some of your stuff. But yeah, um, okay. Um, let's see. So I have a, I have a lot of the illustrations and stuff that I did, um, you know, from the book here, uh, which are pretty cool. You can walk that up to the camera. Yeah, yeah. Just everybody, just pay attention because I yeah. can't see it from here. I'll take a look just, at it later. Yeah. Oh, uh, watch Kayla. Kayla's signaling you. Yeah. Bring it down. Thanks, there Kayla. There we go. It takes yeah. a village. Yeah, it does. It takes a village to uh, get Show the camera picture. focused. So, um, and I, I should write a book on Dozer. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, you know, that's the illustration for the book. Then um, I've got some stuff that I here's sort of a neat project that I just did at school just recently. When uh, my daughter was little, we had this book about fairies, and. Um, so do the project with kids that involves pattern. So they have to draw something that has these areas of pattern in it. So, um, so I always do the artwork along with the students. And so this, this was one that came out really neat. I, I, I love the colors. I love the colors in it. What's your medium? This is just, um, just the markers at school and then um, color pencil. Oh, cool. So, yeah. What else do you have in there, Brian? Well, I saw some earlier that we just blew yeah, away. Yeah, I have, um, yeah, I have, um, well, yeah, that, this is kind of a cool one. Uh, in, in the, um, in the story, the girl Watch is, Kayla and she'll like direct yeah, the is inspired by, um, this legendary horse who, um, whose master was a farmer, and apparently at some time <clears throat> there was a king um, in one of the kingdoms that, that, was, that was part of uh, Moravia, who decided that the farmer should go to work in the mines because they discovered gold there. And the farmer said, hey, if, you know, if people aren't growing food, how are people going to eat? And um, he was condemned to death. So he was given one last wish, and that wish was to ride a horse. So the horse, um, he jumps on the horse's back, and the horse leaps over the, the wall of the, the fortress and somehow magically sails over this river that's like a hundred hundreds of feet below the the fortress and um so she wears um it's apparently the heraldic um crest of of some city in in the czech republic so um she had that crest on her um saddle pad so let Wait, me show me? yeah yeah watch kayla and she'll direct you right there right there yeah so anyway, thank you, Kayla. Uh, yeah, there's that. And how about the what are, what's in the? Well, those are um, these are drawings that were done. Um, let's see if I you used to draw on Church Street. People would go I by. I did. I did. Tell us about that. Well, I had a um, I had a vendor cart on Church Street, and I I had a friend who did cartoons out there. He's uh, Mark Hughes, and you know from Springfield, Vermont. And one year, I thought. They were, they were, this was when they opened up that top block of Church Street. It hadn't been part of the Church Street marketplace yet. It was had still been open to traffic, and they decided to block that off. And 
since it wasn't like bricked in all pretty like the rest of the street, they gave the vendors a discount. So it only cost me about 50 bucks a month to rent the space, but then of course I had to pay for insurance and all this other stuff. But what did you do? And so I did charcoal portraits because I'd seen that when I was when I was in Paris at Montmartre and you know different places, and I said, well, yeah, I can draw as well as that. And I was part I was part of a group called Arts Alive that um, every spring they they put paintings in uh, the windows. Like that painting that you saw at the house, the big, the big black big and white one, one of oh. my dad. Um, that, I had that one I in really, there. We, we should have to do a show at your house. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, and just kind of take a tour. It's like walking around a gallery. But um, I, I had those paintings. They, they, uh, and, and, uh, the paintings of a lot of artists were put up and down Church Street in, church, in the store windows. So um, I used to do demonstrations in schools and stuff with, with that group. And, you know, one day somebody came up with the idea, why don't you draw everybody's portrait? And it was a really popular thing. So I went to schools and then people would hire me to do birthday parties and things like that. And then paint my little baby's face yeah. at this party. And the kids would line yeah. up and you just spend you know, all that time drawing them. In fact, I, I was thinking about, and I, I didn't bring it in, but I have a, a self portrait that I did in that style. I could put just a sec. This yeah. is what it looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty much like this, but a lot younger because it was when I was in my twenties. Oh, and wow. so, um, yeah, that was. It would take me about twenty to thirty minutes to, to do a portrait. And, and how um, much would you charge for one portrait, if I may be so rude? Ten dollars. So it's twenty dollars. Ten, ten, ten dollars with a mat. So like the drawing itself was seven, and then the mat was like nice. three. Really? So, yeah, and you got a free paper bag with it. You know, so, so it's a, a deal. It's know. a heck of a deal. It was a deal. They do it on. They do it all over New York at uh, Fifth Avenue. And yeah. They, they, get, yeah. they get on JetBlue. It, it'd be a lot more expensive now because of inflation. And they're not even nice on, on yeah. Fifth my, Avenue. Mine were good. I mean that the people that had my had me do their portrait a lot of times. They were very complimentary. They were like, "Oh my goodness, you're you know you're better than the artist." I look really good with the third eye. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could have done well, that. Well, that's that's my style. I yeah. know it's like so. it's a visionary thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you something. When they get on the plane with the portrait that they had painted, that you know they don't put mm -hmm. in the overhead. Speaking of overhead vision, they bought the horse in Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And it did well, not fit in the overhead bin. How it would they not. It would not. I don't know. I mean, that must have been an expense in itself. I can't imagine. It fit under the seat in front of you. Yeah. It, it wouldn't fit under the seat in front of them. It wouldn't fit in, you know, the cargo hold. Because this is, you know, it's a pretty, pretty big horse. So, yeah, I mean. Well, you know, they could add it to one flight. And they would have an extra horsepower tonight. You know, they, well, they, 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 they could. <laughs> I don't know how much faster that would make the, the plane go, though. Uh -huh. I'm really not sure. I don't either. Yeah. Have you had fun on this show tonight, Brian? I have had a lot of fun on this show. I have had a lot great. of fun on this show. I've yeah. got to say, it's uh, been great. I've got to say, I don't, I don't know if the audience is having as much fun as we are in this yeah. house, but yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks. A round of applause. Like, I haven't had a TV for 20 years, so I probably won't see this show, so be kind. And I'll tell you something, my guests are fantastic. I'm just not the consummate pro that I never was anyway. But I remember once when I was doing the show, and I had the show for 10 years somewhere else, and uh, I was walking down the street in some city, and a man stopped me and said, hey, the wife and I saw you on TV the other night. And I said, oh, I hope I didn't bore you to death. He said, no, nah, as soon as we saw it was you, we turned the channel. And I went, thank you. <laughs> and, an, and another man comes up to me yeah. and says, hey, you, you, uh, you have that show, eh? And I went, yes, sir. Don't wear yellow. Is that ever ugly on you? <laughs> Thank you, sir. So if you have wow. any fashion or if you have any ideas or yeah. if you'd like to be on this show, will you contact <coughs> NEK TV yep. um, at 802-334-0264. Would you like to just take, take it away, yeah, Robbie? Yeah, I know, I know that number. Oh, 802-334-0264. Yeah. And ask if you'd like to be on um, Life is Good with me. I would love that. We, we take right here in Newport. Um, Todd is the director there, and an absolutely spectacular young man, a very good musician. You all know Todd Pronto, probably. If you watch the mm -hmm. station, you've seen him, heard him perform. Um, there's a lot of talent at the station. Yes, Terry DeFazio is. is there. He's a great musician. Drummer. Yeah. Yeah, you sing. And yeah. um, 
And I, call I, it uh, that. I, uh, I don't do anything, yeah. but uh, I do like to listen. And I would love to listen to your stories. I thank my guests for being with me, Carol Dowd, Kayla Farrar, Brian McRae, and my wonderful audience. Thank you so much. See you all again when I take the show. It's Life is Good at the NEK TV. Thanks so much for watching tonight.